Hello, welcome back. This is another video tutorial in creating a Pokemon style adventure game in AGS. So, uh, in the last video we created a lot of GUIs, uh, so we're going to be coding them up and we're going to be displaying some of the information from our structs into into one of them. Uh, so let's load up our menu button. So I'm going to click on that and on the events tab, click on the on click event. That automatically creates a function in the global script. All GUI controls are, are, uh, uh, happen within the global script. So I'm just going to go G main win oh, dis options window dot visible equals true. So what that's going to do is that's going to display this. So I'm going to click on the little cross. That's going to close it. So we'll just go G main options window dot visible equals false and uh, then I'm going to click on this and we're going to display our active Pokemon screen so we'll do G Pokemon stable dot visible equals true so if we run the game um, you can see that we can now load up our options. If we click on Pokemon, you can see it's quite a it's quite an ugly bit of UI really. I think you could we should have be able to have an icon as well that displays the type, you know, whether it's a bug or a bird or, or whatever. So maybe that that might make it a bit prettier, but it yeah, we could do with working on this. But you can see that our main options window is still open in the background. Uh so what we're gonna do is uh, I'm going to load up the stable. Let's cl let's get the, get it to close as well. So we'll do uh, G Pokemon stable dot visible equals false. So when we click on that button, uh, when we click on this button and display that that new bit of UI, I want to hide the main options window dot visible equals false because we don't want the screen utterly cluttered with UI so if we load that you can see now that we've got our screen so um, I'm going to just we we want to display uh, any of our active Pokemon like in that screen and it needs to be it needs to be updated like all the time because we're going to be able to switch their position because the first Pokemon is always the one that will be in battle to begin with. So there's going to be like a switch button where you can switch the order around. Um, so, uh, yeah. So when we switch, we, we want all of this to be to update in like in real time. Um, so if we go, if in, and I'm going to do that in the global script. So if we go and find they repeatedly execute. Okay, so called every game cycle, okay, except when the game is blocked, which is fine. So <clears throat> it's very easy to display information. So I'm going to update um, the text value of this button because these are all buttons. So I want to update this Pokemon one with the um, if I go to the script so whatever whatever this is I want that to be the text button so at the moment there's nothing there it's blank so that would ha essentially hide it so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go uh, L stable what's it called what's my label called I think I've changed it actually the name since yeah be ready Pokemon 1 okay so it's going to be uh, B ready Pokemon one dot text because that's the property that we want to affect equals and then it's very simple it's literally just uh, ready Pokemon zero dot name and that's it um, so the the best way to think about these is that they're like 
is to think of them like global variables. So we can update these values or display these values from any script, from like a room script or from another script, uh, another custom script. Um, as long as the array, the script that has this array in, is above the uh, the, the script that's uh, that's reading from it. Otherwise, so so say if we wanted to display Ready Pokemon One in the Pokedex script, you'll get an error because it it doesn't know that this exists because it kind of runs down the script uh, the hierarchy. If that makes any sense. So we also want to update the uh, HP and the level. So these are also text properties of the of these labels but the problem is that um, these aren't text this isn't string this is these are integers these are whole numbers so we need to display them a bit differently so we're gonna go uh, L what's it called the label name L stable 1 HP not the best name but never mind so l stable one hp dot text because we want to update that uh, and it's going to be uh, dot text equals uh, string dot format then we do some brackets and a semicolon in the brackets we'll do two speech marks and we're going to in the speech marks we're going to do a percentage and a d so that means that we're going to be displaying an integer number into that into that text so then we'll do it inside the brackets after the speech marks we'll do a comma and then what it's needing now what it's looking for now is a variable a variable name so we're going to go um ready pokemon dot and it's um uh, HP. So w whatever integers stored in in this in this uh, variable will get displayed here in the uh, in the uh, label text. So I'm just going to copy that. We'll paste it. So this is I think the next one is uh, level, and we want to display the level. So that should be updating all perfectly in real time now so we may as well copy this five more times for the other fields in that GUI so this will be Pokemon 2 2 2 3 3 3 uh, 4 4 I hope I hope this is making sense it isn't really that complicated. It's not the most complicated bit of script, really. It's just kind of getting your your head around it. But once you get really comfortable with just you know displaying uh, information like this, it, it should be relatively easy. So this will be Pokemon one, two, three, three. Potentially, because these numbers will will, will change. Um, four, four, zero, one, two, three, four, and five. Because we're going to be able to switch the order of our team around. Um, so there we go. So if we run the game, now it's it's going to give me an error because I did something wrong in a previous video, and you will see. There we go. Uh, it's moaning because if we go to my stable script, the function is is wrong, and all I, c I can only apologise and say it was it was a long day and I was tired. It's actually game start, not st start game. So it'll be game underscore start because um, that's the built-in function uh, that's in AGS. So you can see here that there's a game start function there that initializes a few things, and I I just got that the wrong way around. I don't know I don't know why. So there we go. So if we run the game now, we won't have any problems.
Okay, so let's open up our GUI and have a look. So you can see here that, uh, I don't know why that's not worked, but uh, you can see that they're all blank and these are all set to 0 and 1. Um, let me just have a quick peek because I don't like that. It's in the global script. Uh, one, two, three, four, four, five. Oh uh, man, yes. I I do very long hours offshore, uh, and squeezing in videos after my shift is probably not the best thing to be doing. Right. Okay. So that should be, that should be fine now. So Pokemon. So there we go. So they're all hidden. The default values uh, for our HP and our level at the moment is one and zero. So we, we should probably put some kind of if statement that hides these. Uh, but let's go and collect a Pokemon, and you'll see see it all in action. So let's go and go to the Poke Lab, and we'll head up. Uh, we can speak to him. Yep. Okay. So the first one is a Bulbasaur. I started. I well, the very first time I played Pokemon on the Game Boy, I started with a Bulbasaur. So let's do that. You gained a Bulbasaur. So let's go and view our stats. Okay. Um, not sure why it's doing that. Although I will have an idea. <sighs> yeah. What did I say about working long shifts? Right. Okay. There we go. I think it's. I think it is good though that you see these kind of little mistakes and things, and you know, rectifying them because you know it's 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 no easy thing. Uh, so let's go and collect. Let's go collect the Squirtle this time. Okay, I picked up a Squirtle. So we've got the Pokemon. So here we got a Squirtle. We can see its HP and its level. Okay. Um, I think they usually start at level four, the ones that you collect. So I'll probably go and put that in. Uh, let's go and let's go and update that quick. So if I go to the room script, which is where that's being handled, um, what we can do is we can go um, ready Pokemon zero dot um, level. Well, actually, we don't even need to. We don't need to copy the level. Uh, um, we're not copying the level there anyway. We'll just go ready. Pokemon zero dot level equals. So, so now what we're doing is we're going to write a value and store it. So we'll see. We'll do. We'll do four. There we go. And I'll just copy that put that here as well and we'll put that down there as well okay oops a daisy so let's run the uh, run the game so now our default Pokemon that we collect from from the doctor doc white will be level four so let's go collect the char as Charmander I got a Charmander so here we've got Charmander He's level four, and he has 36, 39 hit points. So there's something funky going on with the button, but we'll see. it's just because the text is too long. But there we go. You can see that. So now we are displaying the information. Uh, we're passing we're passing information from one struct to another, and we're displaying it to the player now with the through the UI. Uh, so I think that's that's pretty good. I think we did a we've done a good thing there. We fixed a few issues as well. Uh, you've seen a bit of code fixing, and uh, I think that's a good place to end the video. And uh, maybe we'll try and do something a bit more fun in the next video. So I shall see you then. Goodbye.